Well, thank you very much. It's nice to be here. It's nice to be up on the panel here with uh, two great partners, Nexon and Apache, who we are involved with currently on uh, some sizable uh, projects for us that uh, one is already in production and one is expected, as Archie said, to come on production later in the year. Uh, it's funny, I ran into Malcolm this morning at uh, the hotel and he said, Bill, are you going to be able to say on schedule? You only have 15, 20 minutes to speak. He knows I'm passionate about some of the things I want to talk to you about today and stuff. Uh, and I will get to that in a minute in terms of some of the things that uh, uh, that are, I, I believe, are key drivers to the North Sea oil and gas business and uh, some of the things that Archie already spoke about, that being access to infrastructure, uh, decommissioning, and uh, a stable environment in which to make capital investments. But many of you don't really know that much about Endeavor. Uh, we've actually been operating here for almost a decade now. Uh, you may know uh, I started the company myself uh, back in 2004 with my own capital. It's uh, to come to a capital intensive business in the offshore arena and put your balance sheet up against some of the majors was probably not the smartest thing I ever did in my, my career. But we've had a lot of success in, in doing things and I thought I would introduce a little bit to you about who Endeavor is and, uh, and what we're working on as we, as we go forward. As you can see from uh, this slide, our business now is focused in the central North Sea area. Uh, we uh, originally began by buying 85,000 square kilometers of 3D seismic that covered the North Sea from Norway all the way down to the southern gas basin and, uh, and, and into the Netherlands. Uh, we threw that net out wide, had businesses uh, and had a lot of success in Norway and the southern gas basin. But because of cycle times that Archie spoke about and because of capital restrictions and stuff, we decided to centralize in an area that we think we have a lot of intellectual capital in. Uh, what you can see from this slide is that half of the properties that we're involved in, we operate, and as soon as we turn on Rochelle, over half of our production will be operated by Endeavor. We have over 100 people involved in our company today, and our largest office is actually right here in Aberdeen, and many of them are here with me at breakfast today. Uh, uh, one of the things that I'd like to point out is that we have had some success as a company selling the UK and North Sea. I've actually raised almost $1.8 billion uh, for the company. All of, about, all of that except about $200 million have been invested here in the, in the UK uh, North Sea. Uh, we have a, a pending acquisition and once we get Rochelle and Bacchus turned on completely, you'll see that Endeavor will actually move itself into one of the larger producing companies here in the in the North Sea. We'll have over 25,000 BOEs a day of production and creating about uh, 500 million a year in free cash flow that will be unencumbered. We'll be looking for the next projects for, for us to go forward and work on uh, from there. You can see that the production profile changes dramatically this year and I would offer to you, and I say this to investors all the time, this is as a result of almost a decade of hard work for us to move this forward. It does take a while to get things turned on here in the UK North Sea, but we've got an exciting time ahead of us, and we will be a much different company at the end of this year than we started at the beginning of this year based upon a lot of capital investment and good technical work over time. One of the things uh, about uh, the North Sea today is that the transition has to occur from the, the majors to the independents if we're going to see this happen. I like to put this slide up because if you look back to the last uh, decade, a little over a decade, since 2000, uh, the top 20 discoveries in the UK North Sea have been as a result of works by the independents. Interestingly for us, and we started Endeavor on this basis up front, we always believed we had to build a company that was not only good at acquiring and exploiting existing assets, but we had to have a great organic team going forward. And you can see from this slide, we've identified it, that four of those top 20 discoveries over the, since the year 2000, Endeavor's been a part of, including the second largest of those, which is a large southern gas basin asset called Cygnus that we unfortunately had to monetize because of the long cycle times and the huge amount of capital going forward. But it's going to be an exciting asset for the UK North Sea as we, as we move along. One of the ones that we like to talk about is is our project Rochelle. 
of interest. This was a small, stranded discovery, deemed to be something less than six million BOEs of kind of potential reserves that we picked up in an acquisition back in November of 2006. Due to good, some good technical work by our team, uh, a couple of appraisal wells, one sidetrack well, we now have a fairly large gas discovery that we expect to have on production by the end of this year. Uh, you can see that, uh, that it sits in an area with analogs to the west called GoldenEye and to the east, Britannia, areas that you know really well. This technically is a lower Cretaceous Copervec turbidite sands underpinned by a very strong and active aquifer that we're excited about. Uh, we expect to drill, the plan is to drill two development wells. Each of those wells we think will produce over 100 million a day. We are constrained by the amount of capacity flowing across the Scott platform, uh, but we are excited about being able to, to move that forward and get to first production by the end of this year. We are well along the way in our own development activities. I got asked this question earlier uh, this morning, uh, but uh, we've done most of the brownfield modifications to the Scott platform. Uh, we have actually rolled the pipe. Technip is a, a large contractor of ours, has rolled the pipe. It's sitting dockside ready to, to go in. We plan to move the rig out to start drilling the first of the two wells here in the next few days or weeks. And then we will uh, lay the pipe with Technip's uh, pipe lay vessel in August and then move to first production uh, probably sometime around the middle of the fourth quarter. Uh, we're excited about this. It's a great project for the UK North Sea. Obviously, we need the gas production moving forward. And let me switch gears. Uh, that was enough about Endeavor, and I'm always excited about to talk about it, but we've got some of our team players here that will visit with you. I think it's interesting to go back from my perspective and look at what's happened just in the eight years since uh, I brought, uh, started this company in the, in the UK North Sea. You can see that oil and gas prices have actually gone up almost 300 uh, percent since uh, 2004. Undiscovered resources, uh, which we like to talk about, have really remained about the same. And I would propose that over time they'll probably stay the same or even get larger as we uh, do more activity and apply better technologies to what we have in this great petroleum system that's been working for the last 40 years. Proved reserves have actually increased, you can see almost 30 percent, and total expenditures primarily because of the cost and the environment in which we work in are up fairly significantly. But as Ar Archie commented earlier, the drilling activity is basically flat. The DEC only approved 13 new projects in 2011, of which Endeavor was part of two of those. And production, uh, it frighteningly, was down uh, as Malcolm said, almost 19 percent year over year. Some of that obviously driven by some big assets that had some technical problems, but if you look at the last eight years, it's down on average about seven and a half, eight percent a year, and gas production is down dramatically more than that. Uh, if you look at, I think it's misleading on here to look at corporate taxes paid, obviously up in the 0-10-11 period, I think the estimates are that corporate taxes paid by the the industry will maybe as high as 13 billion pounds in 2012, but the budget forecast, the Treasury forecast, which came out here recently, shows that potentially dropping in half between now and 2015 or 16, and that's really related, I think, to the drop in production and the lack of activity going on. One of the interesting things for me, and one of the reasons we came to the UK North Sea, was the number of independents, the small and mid-cap independents that were here. We thought we could consolidate some of them and move forward. Actually, in 2004, uh, there was probably 140 or more small and mid-cap independents that were operating in the UK North Sea. I would argue today that in terms of viable small and mid-cap independents, there's probably less than 10 of us that are still operating here. That didn't include the larger cap companies like Apache and Nexon, but the small and mid cap companies that are the feeder for these larger companies have really disappeared because capital has flown away from the UK North Sea. All the majors have announced plans to de-risk their portfolio uh, for the North Sea. And if all of these things don't get your attention that we need to do something quick, we're just not paying attention to what's going on out there. 
I, you know, I give the majors a lot of credit, uh, for, and we need the majors to come in and identify these great petroleum systems that are around the world, and we have to use their balance sheets and their cost of capital to be able to put those petroleum systems into operation as we did here in the North Sea back in the late 60s and early 70s and through the 80s. Uh, I kind of call them the general practitioners that are out there, and we are really, uh, the independent sectors are really the brain surgeons that come in and kind of clean everything up as we go forward. It's true that the majors, I know, I, I'll get some attention to that somewhere along the line. But, you know, technology really, uh, there's no technological advantage anymore in big companies versus small companies because the service companies really create the technology and it automatically migrates through all of us pretty quickly because we're all in partnership together. So there's really no technological advantage. And it really takes the independents that are willing to take the risks to go out and do what I call the sweeping operations to go, to go forward and make it uh, work for ourselves going down the road. Uh, the majors today are involved in, in significant deep water LNG and unconventional oil and gas operations in places other than the UK North Sea. The risk is not that the majors transfer assets to the independents and that the independents would default on their decommissioning liability. The, the independents have always been good about this. In fact, I would argue in the decade that I've been involved over here, there's been only one situation where somebody defaulted on a decommissioning obligation that I'm aware of going forward. The real risk is, is that the majors will provide such unreasonable barriers to that transfer that needs to go on to the independents so that we can pursue the North Sea as it should be. This is a fantastic petroleum system. I call it a national treasure and something that we need to pursue and find a way to go forward. So one of the things that I urge is that the majors and the DEC will find a way in which to make this transition to companies like we saw earlier in the year with Apache, Apache buying assets from Exxon so that we can go and pursue this great petroleum system that's out there. You can see by this slide up here that most of the yet to be discovered reserves are fairly small in size and, and really not what the, the majors would be, be looking for uh, going forward. Uh, the question to all of us, can it be done to kind of turn th things around? Uh, the answer is, is obviously the yes. Uh, you, you can just take the example of what Apache's done with the 40s field, having it, I guess, about eight years now, doubled the production, probably have more reserves today than they had when they bought it back then. A great success story for them and things that Endeavor would like to replicate itself going forward uh, down the road. You can see that in terms of licensing rounds and stuff, of the last three licensing rounds we've had, here in the UK North Sea, 81% of the blocks have gone to the independents that are out there. Uh, so it's got the, this industry really has to rely on the independents to go forward. And what you can see from this slide is the dramatic decrease in production. You know, it's interesting for me as an example. Uh, we, we chose to come to the North Sea because of this petroleum system and knew that there was infrastructure there for us to go and pursue and put assets on production fairly quickly. We didn't think we could be competitive in the U.S. and thought it was a fairly mature environment over there. But if you watch what's going on with the unconventional resources and stuff that's going on in the, the Gulf of Mexico, it has redone itself several times over. And in fact, the U.S. may exceed oil production uh, above the Saudis in the next two or three years if we continue to grow the way we, we go. This slide here is, is telling, and we've got to change the course of that activity pretty quick for ourselves going down the road. So let me talk about just three quick things in terms of key drivers, uh, what I see in the UK North Sea. Uh, obviously, uh, Endeavor has been a real thought leader when it, becomes to, uh, when it comes to the subject about access to infrastructure. This is an issue, and from my perspective, that when we are granted license and we're allowed to come and pursue new assets and we find oil and gas reserves, we ought to be able to get our production to the marketplace to get a return on the capital invested for our investors as we go forward. Uh, there's no question in my mind that the infrastructure holders should receive 
a reasonable rate of return for their investment that's out there. I would argue that most of that infrastructure that we uh, look to access these days is 20 plus years old and the infrastructure holders have received more than their full return of those assets. But even then, there ought to be a way in which to pay them a reasonable rate of return. I'm passionate about this subject, as you know. Endeavor had some experiences of this, not really the best experiences, but success at the end of the day and, and being able to gain access to the Scott platform for Rochelle. Uh, we now have reasonable commercial terms and we move forward, but it shouldn't take 15 or 18 months to kind of work through that. Uh, I think I come with some experience. I was involved with this back in the United States in the early 1980s when President Ronald Reagan signed into law what was called the Open Access Legislation. And I was actually involved with uh, a number of independents at that time doing exactly what we're dealing with here in the UK North Sea. It can be done and it should be done. In the long term, I believe that what we need to go to here is what I call a common carrier approach. And I use those terms and a lot of you think, well, that's a complicated subject or I don't really know what the bill means. But from my point of view, when I say a common carrier environment here in, in the North Sea, it means that if you, as a finder of oil and gas reserves, find reserves as a result of a license grant here, and there is infrastructure and it does have capacity available, then you have to make that capacity available to the, to the independents or whoever finds those oil and gas reserves. And if you can't come to a reasonable set of commercial terms in a very short period of time, then you should have a strong agency like the Department of Energy and Climate Change that will step in and determine what those commercial terms should be on the basis of incremental cost. It's a very simple concept. Every mature environment petroleum system in the world has basically gone to a common carrier approach over time. And it only makes sense for us as we go forward. Archie made the comment himself, we need to access this infrastructure before it is decommissioned or we're going to lose a lot of reserves going forward. Second uh, on here is decommissioning policy. I know there's a lot of people in this room that have been heavily involved. Malcolm in the UK oil and gas, actually Archie and his company have been heavily involved. Uh, in coming up with a way to fix what I consider the destructive tax policy that invites bad behavior in decommissioning obligations that, that are out there. I kind of laugh a little bit. Even my own team at Endeavor has come to me when, when the budget came out this year and they talked about the fact that we had this great success with the budget announcement because we basically locked in a 50% deduction for ourselves if everything moves forward as we hope it will be. But I ask us when we think about that, what really happened, as you know, is the government gave up 25% of their obligation to fund that through tax deduction. I cannot believe that the Treasury or us in the industry will allow a policy to go forward where you cannot get a deduction for a a critical and mandated part of investment that you make in an asset in the North Sea. All that leads to is bad behavior about how we decommission assets over time and it sets up a stage for a major catastrophe which none of us want to see happen going forward. I have a lot of confidence that the government will come to the right conclusion. I have a lot of confidence in folks like the UK Oil and Gas and others of you that are working on this to bring sense to mind in this. It's never been a situation where any of us have not been allowed to deduct our decommissioning obligations going forward and it shouldn't get to that stage now where we end up making bad decisions about trying to avoid the proper way to decommission assets for ourselves going forward. The last item on here is a stable tax environment. Archie said it, he said it well. You know this is a capital intensive business. Capital flows to places where it gets the highest rate of return. What I've seen in the, in the evidence I pointed to earlier about 140 small mid cap companies that have dwindled down to about 10 means that capital is not flowing into the UK North Sea. Why is that? The cycle times in this environment over here are twice as long as they are anywhere else in the world. The other thing that has happened to us and the cost of capital gets extremely high when there's uncertainty about the, the environment in which you make capital investments. We've had five negative 
uh, tax changes since I've been involved with Endeavor here in the UK North Sea. I can tell you going all around the world, and I said it earlier, I've raised $1.8 billion selling the UK North Sea. Investors are nervous about the env stable environment in which you make capital decisions. Uh, what we need, I'm not a big player that wants to ask for rollbacks in tax, number, in tax uh, rates or special allowances. All I want is a stable environment that I know is going to stay there. Then we can make good decisions about putting capital to work for ourselves going forward. Anyway, uh, let me kind of wrap up. Uh, I want to say this to all of you. I love this business, and I love the UK North Sea. This is a fantastic petroleum system. I've called it a national treasure many, many times. It's been operating as probably the second largest petroleum producing area in the world behind Saudi Arabia, a national treasure. I respect the people that work for the industry and especially our team at Endeavor for what they do. In my opinion, the offshore petroleum system is a national treasure here and we should all work hard to nurture and prudently kind of develop what's left for us for the 440,000 people, some of which are are obviously here in this room that, that work in this indus, industry for the Treasury who needs to solve their Treasury uh, problems going forward and this great petroleum system that we don't want to see waste away. Endeavor is absolutely committed to the North Sea and we, we, we can't wait to kind of turn on these new projects but in order to create more value for its investors and capital that we invest we need some help quickly to make some of these things happen. I thank you for your attention. appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak with you today.